and this is Improving the World. I'm an international improv comedian myself. I talk to amazing international improv women. In this one, I talk to Laura Dorneweird Perry. Say that five times fast, because I tell you, I had to practice it a couple of times. She is a Dutch improviser, and during the zombie apocalypse, she was holed up in France during this interview. I, of course, am in Hong Kong, as per the always. And if you have never seen these, I love a virtual backdrop. Hashtag, this is not a real brick wall. Laura and I talk about the fact that she is an international improv teacher, first and foremost. She feels very strongly that women should be teachers. Well, hey! Oh, and I open this with a blooper because I'm weird and I make lots of mistakes and I think bloopers are funny. So, enjoy. I am hey. Lauren... Uh, I'm gonna do it again. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Internet. Okay, our topic today is why women should teach. You've been a teacher for a long time. You find yourself stumbling into that or was it very intentional? I feel like when I look back on my youth, I've always been a teacher. I had siblings. I was the annoying older sister that was teaching them even though I didn't want to. And then I did some teaching while I was in high school. And then when I went to university, I really missed the small little teaching opportunities I got. Me and two friends, we organized a summer week where we would make a little play with kids for five days and then we would perform on the sixth. I called all the theaters in the area to go like, can we perform our show at your theater? One of them said, absolutely, please come by. Not just that, would you like to teach theater in the new season. And I was 19 and I was like, sure, I'll yes. teach theater. Thanks to this one theater owner who on the phone thought I sounded like someone who can teach theater. I got the opportunity to get 12 kids in the classroom and just start teaching them. I literally remember standing in front of them going like, I, I, I don't know, how about we play hide and seek? And I'm just going to discover later how this is going to apply to theater. <laughs> Especially within improv, we have different kinds of formats and approaches. In terms of the realm and space within which you teach, what are the different things that you offer or do? Through the years, I've added to my workshop list more and more. And I've even had like one or two complaints about how the hell am I supposed to choose one of your workshops if you send me a list of 15. Yeah. Every time I'm interested in something, I love translating that into a workshop because it helps me structure my thoughts. For instance, I've started with the workshop Dancing for Dummies, where mm -hmm. I took my dance background and was like, how can I apply that to improv? It's a workshop where I teach 10 to 14 dance styles in three hours. So I discovered through that workshop how it's not just about dancing, it's the meta skill of bluffing, mm -hmm. pretending to know what you're doing, even mm -hmm. though you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I have a few workshops like that, where I teach one thing, but we're actually it's a level above that we're actually working on, like how to pretend to know what you're doing yeah. in, in the face of not knowing. I do workshops around physicality and love scenes, and I think that's a lot of doing it. It's mm. not a lot of me talking about how to experience feeling more connected to your body, feeling more connected mm. to slowness or to the other person. And I think there are a few workshops where I get super nerdy about format, long form story and narrative, which I really enjoy teaching all those different styles because it's also me. I am a person who loves working on that entire range. I got fascinated by the topic of death in improv. Yeah. And I was like, that's not really my profile. And I'm like, hell yeah, it's my profile because it's it me. Is. I am interested in that. Yeah, yeah, it is now, right? Of course. Yeah. Shifting gears a little bit, you mentioned to me when you and I were talking that your feminism leaks through into the improv that you do and the teaching that you do. Tell me about that. For a while, being a feminist and learning more about what that means was separate from the improv and after a while I realized oh yeah it's me and therefore it's now part of my improv. Sure. I started an all-female improv group a few years ago and I discovered so much through working with just women or with non-males and I feel very strongly about letting other people discover. So just give an example when I started that improv group with all women one of the things we discovered is that sometimes we thought oh, now there is a bouncer of a club needed. Let's play a male character. Mm. And then after the show, we were like, why, 
why did we do that? Just mm -hmm. one of us saying, couldn't we have just played a female bouncer? And it seems very logical, but that's not where our brain goes in that moment. Sure. So to be able to change those patterns, we needed to train ourselves and to become more aware of that. As a teacher, I thought, I can play a part in this. Mm -hmm. When it's a doctor and patient, I will point at the woman and go, and you're the doctor. And then I'll often will also go like, because we can yeah. to make us all aware let's be honest if i wouldn't have said that would she have taken the doctor role would he have taken the patient role mm -hmm. maybe but maybe not and other things like when are you getting up can i get two volunteers for a steam a lot of the times male players tend to jump up faster than female players there are times when i'll say it beforehand and there are also times when i'm like I'm just going to point out a pattern I'm seeing here just to make us all more aware. Can we create more equality in the process of a class? It's been very useful. I've seen a very good response to it. It's also a little direct. Mm. And coming from a direct culture, I always feel like I can sort of hide behind that. Yeah. So I can be like, oh, this might be a little painful and you might not really like to hear it. Maybe not even like me. Yeah. And that's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to the ones that need to hear it and then we'll listen to it. Men and women are and can be feminists. Do you yeah. feel that your being a woman makes you a different teacher than if you had those topics or thoughts or agenda items and you were a man who was teaching? I'm married to a male feminist and he does very similar things in his workshops and definitely when I say something like that, or when he says something like that, it has a different effect. It can be anything. And we've also taught together, so I've seen it happen under my eyes. I think in general, women resonate slightly better with what I have to say, and men resonate slightly better with what he has to say. We've played with that. We've been like, oh, this man needs to become aware of how he takes up a lot of space when he plays a scene. Mm. regardless with who he plays but it mm. it often goes to the disadvantage of a, of a female player gael pointing it out not always but sometimes it has a different effect and i think i speak from a point of view where i've had the experience so i can give examples i can say yes in the first few years of my improv i felt very comfortable always playing the love interest or the mother or the nurse, that felt like every time I did that, it got great response. So I embraced that role with all that I had. Now that I know that that's actually a pattern that I would like to break because it's not doing female players any service if there can only be the side character, I will not do that anymore. But I've had the actual experience of taking that role over and over again for the first few years that I improvised. How about if you turn the table and you are the recipient, if you are the person being instructed, do you feel that for you equally, it is different if a man or a woman is instructing and for you, do you take things differently? Yeah, like you just said, like I definitely respond better to male feminists than to female teachers who may not have that attitude. But if I look at all the podcasts I consume about the courses I've taken, those are definitely female voices that I listen to a lot. Mm. Unfortunately, improv does not have a lot of female teachers, but mm. I think I've been very influenced by the few that I take in workshops with. Internationally, I learned so much from people like Freddie Styles, like Inbal Lori, and more nationally, I've been taught a lot by Anya Borsma in the Netherlands, Lisa Lotte, who unfortunately doesn't teach anymore. I consider those people that they formed me a lot. But why is it important that the women talk to you? Yes, maybe you hear them more because you're a woman and they're a woman, but why do we need the women to teach? I mean, is their voice any different whether or not a man or a woman is saying, you know, make sure that you play a diverse number of characters? Why do we yeah. think it's important that women get up there and teach? Because they have had that experience. Because they, they actually speak from a point where I live in. If a male teacher tells me, oh, you should just take center stage and take the main part, I'm like, well, you don't live in the same type of world as I do. Because <laughs> when, when I do, like, for instance, if I take a high status, I've been in situations where a male player would try to, like, go over that male players don't have uh, again generalizing but 
not many male players have had that experience of like, I start something and it's not being accepted as such. Even if they do say I've had that experience, I'm like, yes, but you only have had that experience maybe on stage. I have it in my life every goddamn day. <laughs> Yeah. There's this interesting game that improvisers play where we are equivalents, we are peers, and we play together. But there's something still there about unaware, leveraging inherent status, whatever it is for you that sit on your natural shoulders and bringing them into the scene, and unaware breaking rules of improv in a way that maybe isn't comfortable for everyone. So, so trying to jump yeah. status that's already been created because you're like, I'm playing with it. But for yeah. someone, you're right, maybe who's on the receiving end of that, you're like, I just created something and you're negating me. Yeah. And you being the kind player, you don't want to try to trump them because that wouldn't be kind playing, right? I've said in my workshops to women, you are not obliged to play a good scene. Hmm. And that means that sometimes if for whatever reason you feel like this is now the hundredth time that you I don't negate what I started or 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 talk over me or take the high status mm. I am not taking this one anymore the example I often give is a show I played with three male players I stepped on stage as the head of the police academy that they were mm. part of mm -hmm. and uh, they all went to the line they said uh, yes sir and I was like, no, it's ma'am, drop down and give me 20. I, I sort of blocked their endowment, but I was just not having it anymore mm -hmm. that they kept endowing me as soon as I was high status as a male. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, it worked, but even if it hadn't worked, mm -hmm. it's worth it. Mm -hmm. You're not obliged to play a good scene. You can also make a point if that makes you feel better as a player. You also mentioned to me that you do some mentoring. And I'm wondering, what does it look like to be a mentor? And who are the kinds of people that you usually end up? The theater school I started at, I stayed there for five years. And in the last few years, I started mentoring younger teachers. So I was around 23 when I mentored my first teachers. And then... I ran my own theater school, so for another five years, I was leading them. As soon as there is a teacher who says, or even an improviser who says, I want to go into teaching, I tend to encourage them and see if I can help them out. I have people substituting for me in my classes and trying to help out. Like, this is what I normally do, and if mm. you want help with that. I try to do so because especially there's sometimes a lot of insecurity. Who am I to teach? Or what should I do or should I just copy what I've seen other people do? And I think finding your voice or being okay with trying things out on the floor, that's something I tend to encourage a lot. If someone in a conversation will be like, yeah, maybe I should also consider teaching or I guess maybe this could be in a workshop. But and I'm like, Rah! like, ah! yes, we need more female voices. And I think improv in general needs more diversity of voices, including mm -hmm. those that say, oh, how about we don't try to trump each other and get the highest status, but mm -hmm. also like work together or have a softer tone. These are things that women generally are awesome at. Yeah, or as women figure out what it means to do our own gamification of status play. So instead of going gentle, let's go aggressive and intense, but see what that comes out like as ladies. Yeah, I love encouraging women to start scenes like, you know, do archery, climb a mountain. Uh, mm -hmm. It creates completely different characters. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of times when women would start a scene climbing a mountain, it's not about who gets there first. It's about how we get there together. Fine. Great, so we need more scenes like that. You mentor? you coach and you teach. What are the differences? So they definitely all come from the same place within me and then how it presents itself is slightly different. The teaching would be a lot with groups, pairing something and bringing it to a group. Yeah, so this is interesting. So I think the word coaching is used for both coaching an existing group. So like, hey, you already exist as a group and let me look at, I can be like, this is a pattern I see. Anyway, I was your coach for the night, bye-bye. And then there's also the word coaching for one-on-one -on -one helping people go through things. I do some of that too, and I've done that with improv, but also on communication or presentation skills. As a teacher, I craft something and I bring it to the group. And as a coach, I'm always in this scary place of I'm just sitting here and I'm letting you come with what you have and what you need to work on. Mm. And we're going to find it out while we're in this process, how I can help you. 
And then there is the mentoring where I take them a little bit by the hand, sort of like, what are you going to do? And when it happened, I'm going to ask you after how it went. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's also some sort of coaching, but it's slightly more from a different status point of view. Hmm. Recently, I've been helping a group of improv teachers more online. So there, I also try to be there for them as a coach to ask them questions and share information with a Facebook group. And this is where I'm also trying to combine the coaching, the mentoring and the teaching that I've been doing into something where I can help more people at the same time. Because it's been a lot of one on one. And I feel like there are more beginning teachers out there who need more help or people who've been in the process for a while and need more encouragement that however they're doing is great and that they can be better teachers. So more teachers, better teachers, more female teachers. We need female teachers. I'll say female and women. Yes to both. That perspective, original direction that you come from gives you uniqueness and power that you can tap into. Perspective you and you alone share. It definitely goes as broad as having non-white people teach, having more non-able-bodied teach. But language it, is different, goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> more diversity in those voices, in who we have in front of us to listen to. If somebody watches this and they have never done improv before. They are the younger version of you. It happens to be a woman. 52% of the people might be. What are the words of wisdom that you have to share? Change us, change our lives. No pressure, go. Oh, <laughs> it's a, a do it. One, do it. And that can be scary. And that is okay. So to feel like, oh, but I don't know enough. Or, oh, I feel like I am XYZ. You can bring that to the classroom as well to say, hey, I, I came up with an exercise. I don't know if it's going to work. Here we go. So mm. the improv attitude of, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to sell it anyway. Mm. Uh, I think that's a really good attitude to have in teaching. Take all your improv skills to the classroom because that's what we need right there. We need your unique voice. Mm. You don't need to know everything to be of tremendous added value for those who take your class. Improvise in every part of your life also yeah. when you teach. What are the ways, how do they find you? I'm on most socials with my lovely difficult name. I'm the only person with my name. That's a great thing of a difficult name. I'm the only person with my name. You can find me on Facebook and on Instagram where I'm quite active. I also have a website, theimprovcouple.com. You yeah. can see our world tour and the both of us, we write articles and blogs about things that we're passionate about, including yeah. gender issues. And if you're an aspiring improv teacher, then definitely reach out. I have a closed Facebook group where I share some good stuff. Contact me for oh, that too. All right. Get in the queue, kids. You better get in line right now. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so very much. I really appreciate your time. I will put links below to the different ways in which you can find both the couple as well as the individual humans. If you want to find Laura, I think you just got invited to stalk her all over the internet. So you'll have her name yeah. and we encourage you to go find her and kindly approach her. All right. Here's the thing. Like, I'm Dutch. I will tell you when it's too much. So no worries. You can approach me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Come at her naked. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Have a good day, all. Did you like the video? I hope you did. If you didn't, I'm sorry. If you did, woohoo! Please say kind things beneath and like and whatever the chitlins are doing these days. Cheerio and toodle pip. I'm not going to sign off. Bye.